you, Eddie. I'll be right out. to the hemoglobin room of the Chateau Etzen, where everything is a la carte. <gasps> Thank you, merci beaucoup, monsieur. What do you suggest for luncheon? Today's speciality. Imported American cheese a la Astro Space Cafeteria on wheat bread with a touch of mayonnaise, a dash of delicate mustard with crisp, fresh lettuce leaves. <laughs> oh, it's so alluring. How could one resist? Will I be all, ma'am? Oh, thank you, Eddie. You nut. <laughs> Here, let me pay you. Hi, Doc. You eating in the office today, too? Baker, I specifically instructed you that I did not want to be disturbed. I didn't disturb you. No, but he did. What did I do? You're here. No disturbances. Boy, no, no wonder Yarby runs into town for lunch. Your boss has a personality like a box of rusty nails. Eddie, the poor man's wrestling with a problem. What kind of problem? Ever since he took over the advisory position at the inner city children's clinic, doctors had a rough time trying to raise enough funds to keep it open. You mean a gruff old gargoyle like him works with kids? Lurking behind that gruff old gargoyle is the sweetest, most dedicated man I've ever met. Here, Eddie. Thank you for my lunch. This is a dollar, Julia. No, keep the change. But the milk, sandwich, and dessert came to a dollar fifteen. Oh, uh, I don't think I have any more change. <laughs> Will you trust me until I cash my check? Oh, sure. But you owe me 15 cents. Here. What's that for? Him. To help keep his kids' clinic open. Mr. Edson. You're beautiful. I bet he'd take me for a pony ride. If my mother didn't have to work, I bet she'd take me. Bet she wouldn't. Bet she would. Would not. Would so. Would not. Would so. Don't you like me anymore, Corey? Sure. Why? And how come you're always starting fights? You always start. I do not. You do so. Do not. Do not do so. Do not do so. You will not. Yes, I will. Nobody will see doctor today without an appointment. Does one have to make an appointment to get sick these days, my good woman? I am not your good woman, and my orders are not to disturb doctor except in case of an emergency. And you don't look like an emergency to me. Why, what progress medicine is making now, the nurses are doing the diagnosing. Did I tell you I was a patient? You didn't tell me anything, not even your name. I'm Paul Cameron. Unless you have an appointment, Mr. Cameron, you cannot see Dr. today. I don't have an appointment, but Dr. Chegley will see me, I'm sure. Why? I represent J.T. Whitaker of Denver, Colorado. I'm sorry. 
Dr. Chegley definitely will not see any salesman. What you mean is you won't let him see me, true? Excuse me, Mr. Cameron, I have a lot of work to do. If there's anything I abhor as a secretary, receptionist, or office nurse who assumes all the importance, prerogatives, and authority of her employer. Now, see here, Mr. That's one of the rampant wrongs in our country today. You female fascists have seized power and taken over at the decision-making level. Fascists? Yes. Every day, more and more business houses are going broke because outer office authoritarians refuse to let anybody in to see their employers. If economic disaster destroys the free enterprise system of our world, it'll be because of such female rigidity. Clinic Baker. Is it Miss Baker or Mrs.? It's Nurse Baker. I'd like to speak to Dr. Chegley, please, Nurse Baker. I told you, Mr. Cameron. It's a matter of urgency to both of us, so just buzz the man, Nurse, and I'll take my chances that he'll accept the call. Doctor, line three, a Mr. Paul Cameron. He says it's urgent. Very well. Chegley. Paul Cameron here, Doctor. I'm the field representative of J.T. Whitaker. Of the Whitaker Foundation of Denver? Yes, sir. I'm here at Mr. Whitaker's behest. Oh, well, this is just wonderful, sir. Your, your timing couldn't be better. Can I meet you somewhere? Any, anywhere, anytime. Would now be convenient, Doctor? I'll leave immediately. Oh, uh, where are you, Mr. Cameron? It might be easier for me to come to your office if I can get past one little obstacle. I'll take care of any obstacle. Just name it. Nurse Baker. Baker? What? Where are you, Mr. Cameron? Just this side of the obstacle. Baker. Yes, sir. Get on that phone and tell Mr. Cameron to come right... Cameron? Yes, sir. Well, it's wonderful to meet you, sir. Yes, sir. C c come in. Come in right away. See me later. Doctor, let me remind you that I was following your specific instructions to keep you from being disturbed by anyone. That injunction still obtains, nurse. Now get out of here. Mr. Cameron and I are not to be disturbed by anyone for any reason. And just what do I do when another Paul Cameron shows up? Don't worry, nurse. There are no more Paul Camerons. How lucky can the world get? Baker, I don't appreciate your rudeness to this splendid young man, and I... My rudeness? This splendid young man called me a fascist. I'm sorry. My pet peeve is being put down by females in outer offices. Now you just go step out of here, you stormtrooper. <laughs> What happened to Beautiful? Now, do you need any additional information? No, sir. I'm sure I have enough here. Good. If I may take the copies. Oh, by all means. Take anything you want to present our case to Mr. Whitaker. Oh, there is one more thing, Doctor. Yeah? If I could make a personal visit to the inner city clinic. Well, can you leave now? I'm afraid not. I have to draw up the preliminary report and get that off to Denver. Tomorrow, say, around 10? Well, uh, tomorrow I'm in surgery all morning. Maybe my nurse can take you out there. Of course. Mrs. Yarby is just as familiar with the clinic as I am. Uh, Yarby? I thought her name was Baker. Uh, uh yes, Julia. <laughs> is Julia Miss Baker or Mrs.? Mrs. Oh. She's a widow. Oh? You know, that isn't a bad idea, Cameron. You see, uh, Julia does volunteer work at the clinic one night a week. In fact, tonight's her night. I don't mind working nights, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be seeing you. I'm tired of being the red skin. I want to be the pale face for a while. You can't be the pale face. I can be just as pale face as you. But it's not your turn yet. Then I'm going to be a red skin with a pistol. Bang, 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 b
Oh, you got me, partner. Oh, oh, I'm a goner. See what you did, old Jay Wagador? Is he dead? Not yet, partners. And Corey, with my last breath, I want to apologize to your mother. Huh? All right, boys, go wash your hands for dinner. I'll take care of Dr. Chegley. I'm sure the nurse can pull me through this crisis, boys. Scoot! Did I scare him? I doubt it. But I did frighten you today, didn't I? Don't mistake fright for fury, Doctor. Well, whichever, Julia. I'm sorry. And by way of apology, I've come to drive you to the clinic tonight. Oh? Why? Well, I have some paperwork to do in the office there, so I thought I would win your forgiveness by faking a little gallantry. Fake gallantry is about the only kind available anymore. We fascists take what we can get. Oh, come on, Julia. Let bygones be gone. Forgive me. All right, I'll try. But I can't leave this early. I haven't had dinner. I'll display some genuine gallantry and take you out. Sorry, but on my clinic nights, Earl eats with us, and then Corey spends the night with Earl. Well, in that case, if you have an extra one of those, may I join you? Do you like hamburgers? Oh, yes, real ones. My wife makes them out of chopped eggplant. Yeah. Mm. Am I invited? Go wash your hands. And then what happened, Dr. Chagley? Well, at that time, your mother got very angry again and at poor little innocent Eddie Edson. It's a lesson for us all to remember, boys. We should all learn to control our tempers. I control mine, but not always. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I do so. You do not. Do so. Do not. That's enough, both of you. There is no room for argument in this busy and overcrowded world. What's that mean? Dr. Chagley is trying to tell us that he prefers peace and that he isn't going to snap at me in the office anymore. Oh, is that what I'm telling you? Isn't it? Well, I'm also telling you not to argue with the Paul Camerons of this world. Who's Paul Cameron? A charming young man. With the nerve of a politician. He's also a very bright young man who could have seen to it that the Whitaker Foundation makes a $100,000 grant to the inner city children's clinic. He what? Now you see, my dear, why I was so deferential to him. With his approval, the clinic's financial worries would be solved. What's the Whitaker Fountain? Not fountain, foundation. They give money away. Gee, could we get some? No. We'll be lucky if we get some after his experience today. If I had only known, Doctor, I would have made him as welcome as $100,000 in cash. Now, you keep that in mind, young lady, next time. Next time? What next time? After the way I acted? Oh, it's just as much his fault. No, Doctor. I must accept the complete, full blame. All right, it was your fault. But not entirely. It was my fault, too. It was his fault. Let's say we're all guilty. I'm not. Me neither. Drink your milk. Boy. Say, we've got less than an hour to get out to inner city. I don't want to keep him waiting. Who? Mr. Cameron is going to meet us out at the clinic. You tricked me. Now, now. Remember, you're going to make him feel as welcome as $100,000 in cash. Before or after taxes. You're all better now, aren't you, Sara Lee? Uh-huh. Thank you, nurse. Bring her in tomorrow at noon, Mr. Emerson, so the day nurse can change the bandage and check that hand again. We sure do, thank you. Don't we, Sara Lee? Uh-huh. I wish I could afford to pay you folks something, but... Uh... Whenever you're able. That's why we're here. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, Baker. I have to be in surgery at 7 in the morning, so I'm leaving. But, Doctor, I'm on duty for another hour, and I don't have my car. Some more genuine gallantry. Mr. Cameron has volunteered to drive you home. 
Do you have any objections? You promised to drive me straight home? Straight as an arrow. Then I do object. I always like to stop at the drive-in for a little soul food. <laughs> if it's open all night, so am I. <laughs> well, I'm not. Nighty night. <laughs> It's all right now. What was that all about? You almost broke my only nose. Forgive me, Paul. It was for your own protection. I had to lock the dog in the bathroom. What dog? Didn't I tell you about my Doberman, Ted? No. Oh, Ted is terribly jealous, and he's a tremendous animal. <laughs> I named him after a friend. He's a tremendous animal, too. You know, sweetheart, you're a tremendous animal yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make yourself more comfortable? Oh, thank you. I'm just fine. And remember, I said... A drink. That's all. That's all. Mm. Positively? Just one drink. Now, shall it be bourbon or scotch? It better be bourbon, because we're out of scotch. <laughs> Any vodka? No. Gin? No. Wine? Uh-uh. <laughs> Mr. Cameron, what does my home look like? A saloon? <laughs> but you do have bourbon. A special kind of low-calorie bourbon. It's called Old Grandma. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just settle for a tall glass of juice. Orange or grape? Cantaloupe juice. Cantaloupes are out of season. I'll, I'll wait, wait yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are in a hurry to get me out of here, aren't you? Well, <laughs> it is late, and I do have to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, uh... What is it? Shh! What's the matter? For a minute, I thought I heard the shower running. <laughs> At this hour? Julia, you have been working too hard. You know you ought to relax a little bit. Yeah, live it up, baby. Say, I do hear the shower. You do? Does your dog take showers? Oh, oh it must be my husband. What? Oh, yes, he's on the night shift. Oh, you better... Mr. Cameron, um, <clears throat> I'll send you the inventory on the clinic's equipment in the morning. Yes, that'll be fine. Uh, uh, yes, I will. I do need that, Mrs. Baker. Uh, thank you very much for your splendid cooperation. Good night, lady. Me? What are you trying to pull off? I just realized what your doctor told me, Julia Baker. You've been a widow for three years. Uh-huh, and you've been a wolf for 30. Nighty night. My sore throat ain't going to get nothing more from you. And that's it. I just go right on back to work. Is that it? Is that it? I don't get to go home or lie down and rest. I just go back to work? Okay. But boy, am I sorry Yarby didn't take care of me this time. At least Yarby talks. She's got what they call empathy. Or is it uh, sympathy? Anyways, she makes a fellow who's sick feel... Andy. Yeah, Doc? Beat it. What is it, Eddie? <laughs> Registered letter for the doc. He here? He here. What is it? Oh, it's from Denver. Sign, please. The Whitaker Foundation. A graceful refusal of a grant, thanks to you. Sign for it. What's the matter around here? 
For the past few days, this place has been as happy as Tel Aviv on Nasser's birthday. Eddie, why don't you go on about your business? Baker! I know, Doctor. We don't get the 100000 Right. The Whitaker Foundation sent us $150,000. No! No! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> That reminds me, you owe me 15 cents. No! Oh. Wait.